How you doing guys? It's Alessandro here with Spicy Mustache with some new tips in order to help you create in your own green area, indoor or outdoor, following the principle of do as nature does. As I mentioned on a few of my previous videos, flowers are an essential part of any sort of garden. They attract beneficial pollinators to pollinate plants, but also predatory insects to prey on pests. They are great companion plants for the majority of your main crops, improving not only the flavor of your vegetables, but providing vigorous growth and protection from pests and disease. So dig up the like button and today I'll show you a few of the essential flowers that I plant every single season in my garden. Companion planting means placing different plants near one another in the same garden bed for mutually beneficial reasons. This practice enhances your garden's design and it comes with a variety of benefits, including attracting pollinators, repelling pests and disease, and it could potentially improve the flavor and productivity of your garden. If you manage to figure out which plants work best together, and also if you start to understand how each individual plant can boost each other's growth, this will have a great impact in your garden. On the first place, we've got marigold of the genus Tagete, especially the French varieties. Caring for marigolds couldn't get much easier. The hardy plant tolerates sun, heat, drought, and nearly any well-drained soil. Marigolds are easy to grow from transplant, but you can start seeds indoor or outdoor directly in the area. When planted nearby, marigolds protect the plant from cabbage worms, or if planted near tomatoes from hornworms, probably because of their scent. Marigold is also a good companion when planted nearby bash beans, squash, cucumbers and eggplant. The roots and stems of marigold emit a chemical that may suppress the population of root knot nematodes. Root knot nematodes are tiny soil-borne worms that feed on the roots of ornamental plants and vegetables. Make sure to plant marigolds at least three weeks in advance before planting your main crops out. Planting them out early will help the marigolds to create these symbiotic relationships between their roots and the roots of your main crops, repelling those harmful nematodes. This is exactly the reason why, when the season is over, I just cut at the base of the marigolds, leaving the roots in the ground. Nasturtium, it's an excellent plant to have in your growing space, and I plant it in pretty much every corner of my garden. The whole plant is edible, including leaves, stems, flowers, roots and seeds. It has a strong peppery flavor, and the seeds could easily replace pepper. Nasturtiums are plants that are often used as trap crops for aphids and squash bugs. Nasturtiums used as companion plants can draw away these pests from your tomato and squash and they are also called sacrificial plants because they will perish due to the amount of pests that will infest them saving your main crops. They also attract good bugs such as overflies which are predatory insects for aphids and other kinds of pests. Amaranth plants comes with plenty of benefits for your garden and a great visual impact. Amaranth plant grows well in average to rich well-draining soil with equal amounts of phosphorus and nitrogen. Like many other vegetables, they need at least five hours of sun to thrive best. It's an optimal companion for the nightshade family plants, beans, peas and marigolds. The seeds are edible and they could be eaten cooked like quinoa or popped like uh, popcorns. Unfortunately, I don't have a few flowers in the garden because I had to make some space for the new upcoming crops. However, I paid a visit to Jack and Mitch to talk about a few other flowers and their benefits in the garden. Yo, what's up guys? So we're here by the Borage. This is an incredible bee-friendly plant. So bee-friendly at the minute that I'm actually doing my best not to get stung because this, uh, this is where the bees hang out in the garden. Uh, this is a great edible plant. It's great for salads. Um, I sell it to chefs. And all you just got to do is pinch it out like that. It tastes like cucumber. It's one of my favorite edible uh, plants for sure. Edible flowers. And 
all this borage behind me, I didn't sow. So be careful when you do sow borage because the next year you're gonna have tons of it. Just be really, like I'd say, just sow a small, small amount because it will get in the compost and it will just spread everywhere. Uh, it's a, as you can see, it's a great companion plant. It's next to the kale, the kale is loving it, but it's really, really good for tomatoes. So if you can find a bit in your polytunnel or your outdoor tomatoes, they're gonna do really well. This is a plant that I want in my garden and you should have in your garden. So companion plant with borage in your next growing season Season and definitely see the benefits. So here we are at Calendula. This is an incredible plant. You should be planting in your garden. Bee friendly, companion plant, and it's just also super pretty to look at, but also super medicinal. So to get the medicinal properties, you wanna be planting the orange Calendula. Uh, this is an ancient, like ancient flower that's used in uh, oils, uh, used in medicine, uh, creams to sort out ailments for the body, uh, but it's just, something you should be planting in your garden you're attracting the right pest to get rid of the bad pest this is a permaculture technique i try and cap off each bed with a calendula or a marigold it's just a nice way to have a break in between each bed that if there is any pests uh, there's going to be a good pest around that area to deter it um, so yeah just definitely grow calendulas for that awesome awesome colors in the garden and just to make your garden a bit more of a permaculture haven My favorite companion flower, sunflowers. They're big, bold, and beautiful. The bees absolutely love them, and they're super easy to save the seeds from. Added bonus, they're wicked to grow with kids. Quick tip for growing sunflowers, these guys are sprout inhibitors. So if you plant them next to some vegetables, be careful because they might inhibit the growth of your veggies. Flowers not only benefits your plants in the garden, but they will provide an incredible biodiversity of insects to pollinate and repel pests. They could be interplanted pretty much anywhere and they fit in nicely, giving a touch of color in between your vegetables or main crops. I hope you liked today's video and if so, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification settings so you can be notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you next Friday for another episode. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.